that made me who I am today. It is wrong. You don't have to go through hardships to become a good adult. You know? Life with Ruth Hoff, my lovelies, inspiring you to live an empowered life. If you're new here, welcome to our social empowerment family. And don't forget to subscribe for the recurring members. As always, thank you so much. So my lovelies, today we're going to talk about the impact of our childhood on our adulthood. How does our childhood impact or affect us as adults? So we'll start with um, formation of core beliefs. We, when we talk of core beliefs, we're talking about religion. We're talking about what you believe to be right and wrong. We're talking about your culture beliefs. You know, as a child, we pick up things from our parents and from our bringing that we take up on until adulthood. You know, and these are the things that we believe to be right for most of our adult life, even. When we try to work against them, they always show up, like they always bring up their head and show up. Of course, all these things can be changed, which I'll be talking about at the end of the video. But these um, core beliefs impact us and affect us as adults. If, for example, you grew up in a family that believes girls or females should have particular gender roles, you are most likely to end up doing that in your own parenting or your own adulthood that you believe men are supposed to have gender roles, particular gender roles, and girls particular gender roles. Or if you grow up in a family that is very religious, you'll find that you also your core beliefs are more directed in that direction. So definitely formation of our core beliefs are shaped within our childhood and they go on to be with us in our adulthood. Not forgetting our attachment styles. That is something really, really I find fascinating. <laughs> Considering that I'm someone who is so much in love with behavior psychology. Um, our attachment styles, we're talking about be it friendships, be it, you know, love relationships, uh, be it acquaintances. The way we attach to people is solely dictated by our childhood experiences. What kind of relationship did you have with your parents? What kind of relationship did you have with your caregivers? You know, where you, there are different types of, you know, attachments, different styles, and all these are more likely dictated by our childhood experiences, by our upbringing. If you grew up in a family that is not known to show, for example, physical affection, uh, you're most likely going to be that kind of person that finds it a bit cringe. If someone shows so much physical affection or if you are the kind of child that would have desired to have more physical affection, but you didn't get it as a child, you're most likely going to be a very clingy adult <laughs> in some way. You're going to desire that physical affection a lot, you know. So like I, I say, or I said, I think I posted a shot about that. Our adulthood definitely mirrors our childhood, our experiences, our bringing, how we were parented, how we were nurtured, and it goes to show in our adulthood. It affects the trust that we have in people. It affects our sort of intimacy. Like I talked about, we have different kinds of intimacy. So you'll find some people crave more physical intimacy. Some people crave more emotional intimacy. You'll find some people have trust issues, all depending on how they're brought up. I actually go to the extent of believing that, for example, introverts or extroverts are also dictated by their childhood experiences. For example, I'm an introvert, but I have points where I can pin back and I'm like, I can totally understand why I'm an introvert. For example, not the sole cause, of course, of my being an introvert, but my childhood played a very, very big role in, you know, like, me being an introvert and also my attachment styles, I see that and I recognize where that comes from, you know, for example. Um, not forgetting our neurological development. Childhood experiences influence our brain development. And if you're a parent and you're watching right now or you intend to have kids in future, I really want you to listen carefully. Our lives are impacted so deeply in the first three years of our lives. So every mother out there, every father out there, make sure to really intentionally parent, to create relationships, create time, to be as passionate and affectionate as possible towards your role as a mom, as a dad in the first three years of a child's life. Of course, I'm not saying after three years, just, you know, give them off and, and stop loving them and stop being uh, intentional. 
but the first three years are very very essential very very impactful and actually the first three years are the basic um how do you say that i was almost going to say grunstein grunstein is a german word is the basic foundation of what we're going to be as adults it plays a very 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 big role if someone is going to be a narcissist if someone is going to be kind if someone is going to be heartless it is all created within the first three years of our lives and as a parent you definitely want to keep that in mind if you have the means for example of being the caretaker for your child in the first three years do it don't send your, ch your child away to kindergarten or daycare if it is within your means of course because the first three years are very very essential in you shaping and influencing what kind of adult your child will be in future so always keep that in mind all right i was checking if my microphone is still on um, of course as you watch this video i want you to ask yourself and try to reflect upon situations in your life that you can point back to your childhood you understand like things that you do like habits that you have even your character and personality are those things that you can pin back to your childhood and be like okay i'm like this because abc happened and i'll tell you at the end why that is very very important not just for you as an adult but also for you if you're a parent or a have the perspective or the desire to become a parent at some time it is important that you keep that in mind as you watch this video try to do some reflection and then you'll understand at the end we're talking about resilience and coping mechanisms so this is also a very very important part positive experiences in our childhood intentional parenting contributes a lot to the way we we deal with life we navigate life you know children that have had um a very challenging childhood have challenges navigating the adult life it can be the other way you know like people say oh my my struggles in my childhood made me who i am today my struggles in my childhood made me stronger today i'm someone who says no you were but a child you know and that is also common in the african culture where they're like um if a child went through hardships like in the african culture it's still normal that kids are spanked and all that as a form of punishment and then when they get older even the adults themselves are like oh but that is that is that didn't kill me that made me who i am today it is wrong you don't have to go through hardships to become a good adult you know and that's where i'm saying reflect because i'll talk about it at the end where the cycles come in you know if you grow up when you're still a child and parents are spanking you and may be harsh to you you don't like it and then you get older you tell yourself it was okay you are who you are because of that and that means you're going to repeat the cycle you're going to do the same things because you think it's right so keep that in mind children that had uh, positive childhood experiences definitely have better coping mechanisms with navigating life and are more resilient compared to kids that had a tough childhood and i know that through also my work these are the kids that will end up maybe doing drugs these are kids that will also end up maybe abusing substances you know be it alcohol be it drugs they will end up being narcissists not all of them but in most cases when you look back at the background we're talking about uh, predators and all that they always have a very painful childhood they've experienced stuff that is very bad they've experienced very negative things in their childhood that turn out to mirror in their adulthood behavior that turn out to mirror in the way they deal with life as adults so definitely it is a fact that our childhood hugely hugely impacts our adulthood for example i grew up in a big family yeah to some extent i believe i'm an introvert because i grew up in a big family i was in the firstborn you know like you're somewhere the middle child um and when i analyze like the whole family situation the different characters i think i'm so much of an introvert because i also grew up in a big family like i i found my peace in pulling back into my shell like i always put it um certain things like loving my space i think i think that's what i believe i put it also back a little bit to my childhood you know like you you grew up in a big family you have siblings which is very nice but also on the other hand i noticed that i'm someone who doesn't like crowds i really like my space and it could be also part of my childhood my childhood experiences you know so that is maybe an example i can give about myself but there are several other points which i really don't have to talk about right now because the video would be too long um 
our childhood also influences our identity formation you know that means who are you what makes you special if someone asked who is Rusehoff, what would i answer and all these beliefs that i have in my head are created from the time when i was a little girl for example my moral code is very very high i am i believe in integrity i believe in honesty i believe in trust i believe in respect i believe in treating people equal and these are not things that i just acquired because i'm a superhuman being well i am an amazing human being <laughs> i truly am an amazing human being but what i'm trying to say is all these values i got from my parents you know we we as kids we emulate our parents i grew up seeing my the how my parents treat like other people how they treat strangers how they treat workers you know and we pick up those values i'm going to come to the point i know some of you may be saying oh but some of the skills i learned as an adult or we also have a choice to decide the kind of people we're going to be yes that part is also coming you can but still remains a big part of your adult adult life is influenced by your childhood is a reflection of your childhood you know and like i said from your identity we talk about self is like i'm painfully self-confident i got that from my childhood like my parents always be, made us believe we can be and do anything and everything you know i have very confident parents my dad is the epitome of self-confidence and uh, <laughs> as kids we emulate this as kids we we, we take these things up and uh, i always even say it i always give my parents credit for my self-confidence i grew up knowing i can be whoever and whatever i want to be i can achieve everything that i would like to achieve you know and it's because my parents lived that kind of life and they also taught us to believe in ourselves so had i grew up in a family where maybe my parents are not confident they don't believe in themselves they're insecure i probably probably would have picked up the same because we look up to our parents like i said so i'd grow up with the belief life is tricky or you can never be sure or it's never possible to achieve everything i grew up with parents that have achieved everything they ever desired and even exceeded that you know or even when i look at my dad he's he's also like my role model he, he's someone who went to turn the world into the world and said i'm going to do a b c and he did it and did even more and way beyond you know so that exactly explains why i am <laughs> the way i am why i'm so self-confident why i'm a go-getter while probably why i'm also very optimistic because looking at my parents story which i don't have to repeat here um they made it in life like really really made it in life and it's not like things were just handed to them on a silver platter they worked really hard for everything and for the life that they gave us and that also is something that i picked up as a child i was like okay so everything is possible you know mm. moms dad parents out there guardians i want you to listen to these points and keep them in mind it's very very important if you're planning to be a parent these are things that you definitely want to reflect upon and uh, keep in mind. We're talking about breaking patterns. So that brings us to the point where I said you should reflect. Before you become a parent, I didn't do that myself. Probably I should have done it because I also noticed some patterns in my parenting very rarely, but they come up. Things that I experienced in my childhood that maybe I didn't like, but sometimes they come up. And where I'm like, okay, when I was actually getting ready for this trip, I was like, probably I should have also done therapy for particular points, you know. But I would advise anyone planning to be a mom, just like we prepare for everything, for jobs that we do, we do degrees, we do masters. I would advise every parent before you become, every person before you become a parent, take time to reflect, ask yourself what kind of parenting you would like to exercise, what kind of parent you'd be. Look at your life experiences look at childhood look if you still have any traumas and if you do still have any traumas or things that really affect you or negative things that keep happening and no matter how hard you try you know like the circle keeps repeating itself i would say do therapy you know go to therapy before you become a parent so you don't re repeat the patterns so you, the circle doesn't you know keep going on and on just break those patterns and you can only do that consciously take it by consciously taking the actions to make sure this circle these patterns break and one way of doing it is either you're a very reflected person like i am because i believe to some very big extent 
I am a good mom and a good parent because I consciously took the effort to intentionally parent, to recognize the things that I want to do different compared to what my parents did while parenting me. And of course, picking up the good things that my parents, you know, exercise while raising me. But um, if you can't do it on your own, then I would advise you to do therapy. Even if you're already a parent and you notice some patterns that remind you of your childhood, especially negative patterns, or even probably your own personality that could impact or influence your children. I'm talking about like your self-esteem. If you're an insecure person, if you're so pessimistic, if you're a naysayer, if you're, you're not a go-getter, if you know, small, small things that you feel my kids could pick them up, then probably do therapy. That would help because like, again, I said, our childhood affects and impacts our adulthood to a very, very, very great extent. Is it possible to turn the tables around and turn things around? Yes, but it takes effort, it takes time, and unfortunately, some things are so deeply conditioned that it's not easy to change them. So like they say, prevention is better than cure, you know? So the best way you can prevent the patterns repeating themselves is really working on yourself beforehand before becoming a parent, and should you be already a parent like myself, then take the conscious decision to do things better. To do things different you know and make sure that your children get a positive childhood a warm childhood a good childhood experience because that is going to mirror exactly in their adulthood um as we conclude this video like i said the different types of parenting and uh, we as adults we carry forward the parenting styles of our parents most of the time but like i told you in my example i consciously made a decision of intentional parenting you know um i knew from a very young age that i wanted to be a mom for example and i always dreamt and fantasized and pictured what my my family would look like how i wanted to treat my children how i wanted to parent my children what kind of mom i wanted to be so i consciously worked towards that much as i didn't do therapy it is something it is a journey that i consciously started unfortunately most parents just fall into adulthood and fall into parenting you're like okay i'm gonna have kids but no one prepares everyone thinks oh it's just gonna happen yes parenthood has no manual like i always say but you can take efforts to create a bit of a manual for yourself and your kids so definitely keep that in mind don't just if your parents were amazing parents perfect parents which i don't think being a mom i know there's no perfect parent <laughs> and i like to believe that I'm close to perfect, but I can assure you there's no perfect parent because I also make mistakes. I have things where I go wrong. And the only difference I believe for me in my case is I recognize the mistakes, you know, I recognize them, I reflect, and then I try to do better. But I believe there's no par perfect parent, but we can all make an effort to be good parents. So if your parents, maybe there's something you picked from your parents, from their parenting that was very, very nice and helped you in your life then you can take it up but never pick negative trends from your parents parenting of you especially now addressing especially people from my african community where the parenting in africa is very very i was going to say they very authoritative very has no compromise almost um and it can have negative lasting impacts on children i would advise you even if you believe oh i am the way that i am i am successful because my children spanked me i would advise you to desist from that because believe you me it is a negative impact much as you would love to tell yourself it helped you know and believing that abuse contributed to you being a successful person is also a sign of it's what we call like trauma bonding you know so you try to convince yourself because anyway you had to survive you try to convince yourself that it was okay for example for your parents to abuse you so most important and the importance of this video is to call out to everyone out there who is intending to be a parent or who is already a parent to keep in mind that our childhood impacts our adulthood and then if you're an adult just like me the way you're going to have a successful happy fulfilled life is also reflecting upon your childhood ask yourself which things did I carry from my childhood, be it good experiences, bad experiences that are impacting my adult life? 
why I'm not why am I not successful why am I having problems getting a job why can't I complete tasks we know people that start one task leave it in the middle start the next why am I having problems with the relationships why am I a terrible parent why am I a terrible friend a terrible colleague a terrible partner why, why am I so clingy for example why am I a people pleaser why do I have no self-esteem all those things you can start working on them by reflecting upon your childhood and of course again seek therapy and again to african people i know in the african culture it's looked upon as weakness going to therapy is actually a show of strength and knowledge because it means you can reflect you know where you need help and you take it you know just like we acquire education the same way you can go for therapy my lovelies um once again don't forget to join our family by subscribing like the video, share it, comment. It helps with the algorithm. And we are on our journey to 10,000. Let's make it happen. I'm here to inspire, uplift, and empower you. Until next time, my lovelies. Bye-bye.